champions. They've been in this appearance before. The Jetta side for Team Easy. Torture going in. But at what cost right here? Yes! Welcome to the Zoncast.com presentation on Breaking TV. Kid, gonna be shoutcasting goes and joining me is Shams here as a competitive inside co-caster. And this is the Dream Hon European Grand Finale, aka Championships, aka everything is on the line. You win here, you will be representing the region of Europe and get that trip to Dream Act Summer 2012, as well as a chance to compete for the $60,000 prize pool. So much, once again, really is on the line, and expecting a hell of a series coming into it as a result of that. And we got two very, very good teams. SGTY, also known as Coming Soon, going to be on the Legion side here. They're going up against Blackfade.org, who, of course, are up one game to nothing as a result of coming from the winner's bracket. So really expecting an excellent series. Going to be a lot of fun. Cannot see it other, any other way. First things first. So like I said, I am joined by Shams. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, Breaky. Looking forward to seeing these picks. With already uh, interesting pick. Yeah, we, we definitely do over there in SGTY. Obviously, uh, going with that silhouette right off the bat. And uh, for those that may have tuned in yesterday, and obviously you were casting with us yesterday as well, may have uh, seen a bit of silhouette play. But of course, Moon Meander for Trademark Esports. And silhouette, really a hero that is uh, is is definitely coming on the competitive scene strong lately. And uh, not, I don't even want to say lately, but she's always kind of been around. But uh, really in this event, these last couple of rounds, I mean, she seems like she's been a huge impact for a lot of these teams. So, uh, Banzo, let's go over that real quickly before we jump into that. Uh, so we are looking at Mage Bane, Parasite, Demented Shaman, Electrician, Pebbles, Tundra, Armadon, and of course, Moraxes. Moraxes, if you have been tuning into these last couple of days of Dream Month specifically, you will know exactly why that hero is banned and a very very good reason a couple of heroes left open though and in fact we are seeing them starting to be picked up here so what do you think about the band champs i just want to say that i think my nuts did an incredible job of picking and banning so far because i mean they got the carry they wanted in silhouette first pick and i had a question at first but then you see that the there's so many jungles available so they were going to be able to take either keeper of the forest ophelia or tempest depending on what bxf took mm -hmm. and we see, you know, my nuts first pick Tempest all the time, so that's a hero that's like very high on his board, and he's able to take it with the fourth or fifth pick. Yeah, and Magmus on top of that. So uh, we'll see how BXF responds to a very, very powerful draft so far by SGTY. What do you think about Keeper of the Force over Tempest? I mean, usually it seems to be the other way around, if anything. But uh, BXF yeah. choosing to go Keeper over Tempest. Yeah, and it's actually surprising because I know Insania loves Tempest. I think it's his favorite hero, and uh, I'm sure they're well aware that Minuts is an excellent Tempest player as well. Yeah. So uh, we have to see w w what they're thinking with that and how they go with the, the rest of their lineup. Yeah, I mean, obviously they saw it on the board, and you know, it could be very, very reasonable to see SG2Y pick it up in the next couple of picks. So yeah, pretty much knowing that they were going to get that Tempest, so definitely uh, have something up their sleeve in terms of stopping it and not being too worried about it in the end. So obviously that Polywalk Priest, Wretched Act follow-up. Uh, Polywalk Priest and Keep It The Forest together. You know, you talk about mass push potential. That's definitely what those two can bring to the table. Um, so far, uh, very strong lineup, especially in the AoE uh, teamfight presence as well. Uh, still need needing that hard carry, though, if they choose to go that route, or even tanky carry if they choose to go that route. So we'll see how Blackfeed finishes. But also, as you mentioned, the Silhouette first pick, and then leading that into the Tempest Magmus. So... Um, silhouette first pick though, do you, do you actually think she's the uh, first pick potential? Uh, honestly I haven't, I haven't been, uh, played a competitive match so far with the hero. I, I have actually once against BXF, and it didn't work out too well for them in that game, but I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen lately Silhouette should be so dominant. I, I don't know if it's first pick worthy yet, but, uh, obviously Minuts feels that way, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you can't complain with the picks that he got around it. To, exactly. to surround it with Magmus and Tempest, it uh, looks like he had a plan with it, and it worked out well. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. It's a very good point. I mean, the fact that they got Tempest and Magmus to follow that up, it really, really, you know, goes to, as you are saying, uh, well, well played by Minuts right there. Uh, for SGTY in terms of doing the drafting. So their final two picks, about 20 seconds to go right now uh, here on their overtime. So we'll see. They're right-clicking that Nymphora. And the final one still yet to be right-clicked on top of that. So uh, there you go with the Feral right-click. Possible to finish with that, it looks like. So Nymphora and... 
Yes, it is going to be the Pharaoh pickup. So go on the Pharaoh pickup to finish things off here. Um, um, I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, Swinomon is going to be playing Magnus, it looks like. He also plays a really good Pharaoh, but that's going to go to Noob G and swapping things around all over the place. So, Pharaoh, uh, to go on those uh, final two picks with the Nymph 4, what do you think of that? Uh, I mean, I think it makes out to be a very, very powerful team for SG2A. Tons of uh, initiation with Pharaoh, Tempest, and Magnus, and even Silhouette with the Portal Key. Uh, they have a lot of jump power with the Nymphora teleport as well. I mean, they, they have a lot going for them with this lineup. Yeah. And they definitely have this game going into the late game, and I think BXF is very well aware of that. You see them right-clicking Balfagor, yeah. and I think they're going to try to make this a fast, quick game. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We talked about that with Polywalk Priest and Keeper. You add Balfagor to the mix, and <laughs> those towers, they are going to be destroyed, and there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do about it. Now, the first thing you like to look, especially when you have a Balfagor and a Keeper of the Forest, is the creep clearing potential on the opposition. And what do you think? Do you think that they can actually handle that pretty effectively with their picks there? I think they, they'll they be able to team fight early on, but I, I don't think they're going to be able to clear creeps with their team, yeah. which is going to kind of force the team fights. You see Torture still left over, and I, I'm yeah. very happy to see that. I hate when I see people first pick him or pick him with the second picks. I just feel like he's not that powerful anymore. He, he doesn't bring as much power as he used to bring to the table, so I, I'm glad that he wasn't picked so high. Maybe they, uh, Legion could have had him to stop this push, but... Uh, Besides that, yeah. I'm glad to see him not pick. Well, about the, I mean, do you think it was just simply that latest nerf with the 50% damage to towers that did it in, or was it even before that? Uh, no, no, I, I think that's definitely what changed her, uh, changed him being so powerful. And yeah. uh, I, I just don't think that the hero provides as much as it used to and doesn't warrant such a high pick. It, it still is an effective hero in certain things, but it's not the huge powerhouse that it once was. Mm -hmm. And I actually questioned it a lot when uh, we saw yesterday that, you know, TDM had a free farming silhouette against a free farming torture. And I was like, okay, maybe in the old torture this would work out because you could start pushing down towers and such, but he's just not as powerful anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can definitely agree there. And I think uh, on the competitive scene amongst what we've been seeing lately, I mean, that's definitely not the first time we've seen that. I mean, we've definitely seen it going past the banning and the picking stage uh, lately as well. So more and more teams seem to kind of be picking up on that. But. Um, obviously, uh, waiting for Keizu to come back in here, the team captain for Black Fade, and then we'll be good to go. Obviously, having some fun in chat right there. <laughs> uh, for those that may not uh, know, I think what they're kind of referring to, obviously, last night uh, for the finals of the North American region, <laughs> it was actually fun in this one gaming. At the end of the second game, they just simply left without even, they just de they paused the game and DC'd, and that was it. That was how they conceded, basically, so... Uh, no, Enso, Enso passed the concede vote. He didn't make he, it wait five minutes. That's true. He did actually. Shout out to Enzo. <laughs> well, one of the players stayed behind in Enzo to actually concede. But, yeah, it was a little bit of a bad manners, you know, funny, whatever way you want to call it. But, yeah, that's what happened yesterday. So, obviously, referring to that perhaps. But also the usual shout outs going on between the two teams. But, yeah, I mean, again, Black Fade, they're up one no, game to funny. nothing. Smack, Smack, Smack Donald and Era have a huge beef. So, it's kind of funny that he shout them out. Oh, do they? Yeah, they, yeah, they don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my worst enemy. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Obviously, Era for Fnatic Great Call. He's uh, currently... Uh, uh, well, Fnatic Great Call, of course, they've already qualified for this uh, DreamHawn main event sponsored by Alienware Arena at DreamHack because they are the returning champions, of course. So they will be going there. Um... But yeah, so Black Fade up one game to nothing. So, since we're sitting sitting in this pause here, I'm curious, you know what what your mindset would be on this if uh, you were kind of in their position. For BXF, because they're up one game to nothing, do you think they can have that mindset of, you know what, we can not necessarily throw a game, but we can kind of uh, maybe do a little bit, something a little bit different and at the at a very risky cost and may, maybe have it not work out because we're up one game to nothing? Or it should, should their mindset just be, you know what, don't even worry about that. We need to go into this as if it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, now, what, one of the things I was going to say is that, you know, all of the games that we've seen Silhouette be so, so effective in, she's gotten complete free farm for the first, not just six, seven minutes, but for the first maybe 20, 25 minutes. So I like how BXF is going to take the fight to her early on because I, I just don't think she's as powerful without that early free farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... True. Relo here playing uh, Silhouette, of course, for SGTY. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how she actually farms it up this game. It looks like we are going to be coming out of the pause, though. 
has both teams apparently ready to go, and the connections have come back. So uh, going to get an idea of how lanes are going to be happening. Uh, for BXF, pretty ideal in terms of who's going to go uh, by themselves or whatnot. Obviously, Polly Walker, Richard X, Solo. you got your Glacius, Balfour lane, and then Keeper of the Forest, of course, going to be in that jungle. So do you think BXF, I mean, level 6, is that going to be a mark where they just start pushing? Do they group up and just team pushing right at that mark, or are they going to play, you know, kind of feel it out? No, I definitely think we're going to see that. As soon as Keeper hits 6, he's going to come and join probably Balfagor in some lane, or even Poliwag Priest. That's the thing about this lineup. They can split push two towers so hard. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't really think the SGTY is going to be able to do much to keep up their first tier towers, at least. Yeah. The one good thing that SG2I really did with their lineup is y you have that hard carry and silhouette, and she's going to be able to kind of ignore these pushes considering the other four heroes, Magmus, Nymphora, Pharaoh, Tempest. Y you'd like to think that those four heroes are going to be able to kind of team fight without a fifth player, and that's usually something you see uh, a team go with with a hard carry, such as Silhouette or Mage Bane, for example. Yeah. Well, we are seeing those lanes uh, kind of come out right here, and ooh, are we going to have a farming Magmus actually at the bottom lane? Yes, it looks like that is going to be the case when Amon scores with the hatchet, so uh, he's going to be down there, obviously Silhouette in the middle, and then Pharaoh at the top lane. So I guess, you know, with their setup, it kind of, not necessarily forced, but it just so happened to work out that way. Uh, with the Magmus going to be taking the farm down here, you think a farming Magmus can prove to be deadly? Yeah, for sure. I was just going to say that Magmus is one of the best like uh, stoppers of pushes because y you're going to fear pushing into a Magmus with a portal key. That ultimate is just so devastating. And it's pretty easy to get one off as soon as you have a portal key and a team's just flat out pushing towers. Uh, they can't really do much to stop it. Yeah. Especially if you're able to acquire that portal key before the other team gets a barrier idol. Yeah, and we see down here, obviously, going to go two versus one against this Wretched Hag, and we're going to harass quite heavily, so uh, Magmus should have a good time. But this does mean, as we see in the middle lane, got another pause coming out, but Relo on Silhouette. So you talked about that, uh, you know, not letting her get that early farm. Sure enough, Balfagor Glacius are going to be matched up against Relo here in the middle lane. Do you think a uh, lane swap is possible here from our Legion side, or is that going to be a case of they're just going to have to try to deal with it? Uh, I honestly think they expected these lanes, and uh, I, I don't think Silhouette will have that hard of a time. I mean, Glacius can't really harass him that much because uh, are you going to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Silhouette? You know, he might get himself killed there. Also, we could have, you know, once Tempest gets some levels, he could assist him with some kills on Glacius. And uh, glacius Balfagor isn't the scariest combo in the world as if it was like a Pebbles or so. Yeah. I mean, Balfagor is not really going to all of a sudden turn around and kill the Silhouette, so she, she, she should be pretty fine there. Yeah. That's true. Very, very true. So again, Relo, very skilled player on top of that, and I'm sure he can uh, handle his own in that middle lane. So, But again, something to keep an eye on, uh, especially when it comes to his creep farm and how that GPM is looking for him. But no doubt, you know, Balfour is going to get some very good farm himself, going that Hatchet Iron Buckler build especially, and uh, being that 2 versus one situation. That leaves us with the top one. we got Polywalk Priest going up against a Pharaoh, and it uh, seems like Polywalk Priest, so far at least... Oh. The 2 0 compared to the 0 obviously, very early on, but uh, pushing up the creep lane even. Yeah. Obviously, a creep was denied up here by Tempest, so. Something yeah, I was going to say, Noob G has to be very happy about how this is going so far. To be this close to his tower, not even a minute in, he should be feeling very confident here. Yeah. So, other than that, though, it sounds like you expect Pharaoh not to have the greatest time against that Polywalk Priest. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I mean. As a suicide pharaoh, all you're expected to do is really hit six without dying, and you've yeah. done your job, and I think he's going to be able to do his job fairly easily in this situation. Fair enough. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on Noob G, playing that pharaoh, and see how he does. So, uh, bottom lane, look what Wretched Hag is doing, and obviously yeah. we will see this. Obviously trying to hide in the jungle right there, not being spotted, and Nymphora's going around trying to see where she is, but little does she know she's over in this area, kind of just above the tower, so... Very good hiding spot for Keizu right now, and you see me just leveled up, in fact. So he found a pretty good hiding spot there, it seems like. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Fitzky doesn't uh, fly the Flying Curry over here to try and spot him, because he knows for a fact that he's somewhere around here, leeching EXP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, here it comes right now. Yeah. Oh, I don't... Oh, yeah. I thought he might have saw him there, but yeah, again, can't really see him unless he goes actually in that little hole. Uh, but as you mentioned, the Courier's definitely coming over, nothing on it. So yeah, it's just using this solely for that scouting purpose. And as soon as it gets over here, Wretched Hag will definitely be forced to blink away. But again, yeah. Keizu, I mean, <laughs> he's, he's uh, leeching a little bit. If Magnus was level 3, I would say that you could, they could possibly kill her, but no, no way without that. Yeah, yeah. yeah she'll just she blink didn't... away. And 
Almost went into the Tempest, actually, but Tempest Ooh. obviously not enough mana for a stun, so Jerry not going to get much uh -oh. out of that. Oh, top lane while that was happening. Of course, missing the blood dust kill, but back to the bottom lane. Wretched Agash taking the stun and will get away, at least for now. Top lane, though, obviously, Pharaoh going down. It looks like a gank coming in for Keeper of the Forest uh, to help with that kill with Smack Donald on the Polywalk Priest, but uh, apologize for that. Obviously, watching a little bit of an exchange going on here at the bottom lane, but Keeper of the Forest, not too often you see him ganking before the level 6 mark, but right up there. Apparently able to do enough to help that. Yeah, and I mean, if they would have kept that flying career bottom, I don't know if you spotted where Hag blinked into, but yeah. they would have had an easy kill on Hag, and that would have been huge. It's really unfortunate they sent it back. Yeah. Well, back at the base now, and of course going to be bringing them, I guess, uh, Ring of Teacher, actually, to the middle lane for Silhouette right here, so... Uh, gonna have that now to her benefit, but yeah, you can see Wretched Act is doing everything in her power to get any type of experience leeching that while then 4 is just chasing her around. Magma's gonna start it actually, the Zeal set on top of that, but it's gonna take too long to come back, and Wretched Act will be able to blink away. But a lot of fun mind games going on at that bottom lane, it seems like, between those two. Do you think Keizu is actually uh, doing a good job, though, so far? Oh, for sure. I mean, he's, he's on par with Magmus, and... Uh uh, if he wasn't doing what he was doing, he'd be level one, so... Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely doing a good job here. Very good news for uh, Black Fade. The fact that KZ was actually doing a pretty solid job at that bottom lane. Middle lane, though, that was really the interesting one, at least for me. Uh, keep an eye on Silhouette, see how she's doing. I mean, right now, 9 and 2, like I said, she did just get that Ring of Teachers. It kind of opened a little bit, but... 9 and 2 compared to the Balfour, 20 and 14. And again, clearly being dominated by Lesky Q here on yeah. this Balfagor. So you think Silhouette's doing the best that she can, though? Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I don't think she's going to be in any danger of dying, but she's not going to have the best time creep, creep killing with this Glacius here. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing I'd like to note is, like, last game I said the same thing about sun, Fun in the Sun, is that I, I just don't like the Hag suicide. I mean, if you especially if you look at their lineup, too, uh, Hag's going to be one of the main damage dealers, and they kind of need her to get strong. We'll see how they try and bring her back in the game, but as of now, she's not going to be much of a factor. So it's not like, yeah, you were talking about that, you prefer Bubbles, right? Usually over Yeah, Hag. Bubbles or even or even Pharaoh. I mean, Pharaoh hits 6, he doesn't need any items, you know? Uh, but Hag isn't the same way. Yeah. And you even see him being level 3, they're doing such a better job of keeping the lane back. Yeah. But th that being said, I mean, it is a 2v1 in comparison to the 1v1 top. Oh, uh, Glacius doing a dodge right there. He did pick up the double damage for, for Silhouette King down here, but it may put him in a little bit of trouble. Freeze going to be used on the Silhouette, and no, he will be fine. So, good job by uh, Mza right there on that Glacius, able to steal the rune and also get a little bit of uh, pressure out and stay alive. So, well played. Look at these minions, though, from Balfour going all the way around and harassing Silhouette even while Balfour actually stays in the lane. So, again, that's so deadly with those minions, which, of course, are level 3 right now. As far as the ability goes, uh, I, I, I keep liking to think, whenever we do get the chance to see Balfour, I keep saying to myself, those minions used to be that much more powerful before they got nerfed, whatever it was, yeah. about a year ago. But, <laughs> I mean, it was ridiculous how powerful those things were. Because even Didn't now, the they could be annoying. more damage as well? Yeah, the ulti did more damage. The minions, they I think they even slowed for more. It didn't even hit harder. I mean, it was just ridiculous, but... Yeah, I just will never forget Fuji Apple's like soloing teams with that hero. Yeah. It was one of the most exciting things to really see in Han. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is pretty nuts back then. Yeah, that's definitely a standout performance in a lot of people's minds that uh, are come from the old school heroes in New Earth as far as competitive goes for sure. So, uh, but he is he has been nerfed a lot since then, obviously. But still, you know, more more of that niche hero now in a case like this where you want him to go for a push lineup. Makes a lot of sense. And we see a little bit of a right here. Is he going to spawn the minions? The ninth. Oh, there we go. He does Both have sides. the cooldown ready. But yeah, the top uh, lane actually as well. Pushing wow. Right now. Yeah, bottom, bottom lane by the Legion bottom team. 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 So all teams doing some pushing right now. Uh, which tower is going to go down? It is going to be the top tower. The Polywalk Freeze to keep it the forest combination proven to be too powerful. Uh, bottom lane, though, is being pressured as we talked about. Now, Polywalk Priest wards weren't used there. Yeah. That's actually a big thing to keep in mind. Bottom lane will go down. The middle lane, it is going to fall here. Holy crap, what is going on? I mean, is this, I'm guessing oh, this is to the Hellborn's advantage here. Yeah, I, I would say so as well, especially if they capture this top tier tower. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Six and a half minutes and all oh, the ports coming in though. And Keeper the Force is going to be in a lot of trouble. Magnus will let us down. The Tempest Ultimate was oh. not used actually. I thought it looked like it almost was. As uh, Polywalk Freeze is going to start running away. He has support coming over from Glacius. Polywalk yeah, will like be fine. Wow. And Keeper stays alive. Wow, through all of that. We'll go Invis right before Silhouette comes. And then the tower goes down. How did Keeper stay alive right there? Did you catch that? Yeah, that was a really... I, I think that was a poor decision by Swindle Melons. Instead of 
just securing the kill on Keeper of the Forest, he went for the kill on a Poliwog, and yeah. it got turned around on them, and Keeper lived. Oh. Okay, now he <laughs> got well. sitting right on top of it. It's like, I got this appeal on New Earth ability. Minimal charges, but hey, enough damage to get the kill. So yeah, Swindermill is unfortunately wrong place for him right there. And oh my god, seven and a half minutes in, 4,500 gold lead all of a sudden for a Hellborn team. Yeah, that, that was a very crucial mistake. Instead of just going for the safe kill on Keeper, chase the Poliwog, Keeper lived and they got turned around on. Very unfortunate. And possibly the biggest thing of all is Hag is just free farming the bottom now. Yeah, he is uh, pushing up that bottom lane. So we do have a little bit of action here in the middle lane. Keeper the four is going to get caught out. Obviously no roots up and she will end up dying. So uh, four heroes here for the Legion team to definitely get that kill. Obviously Balfour running away. Uh, nothing more he could have done. But as you mentioned, Kazu down here on this wretched act, making up for some lost farm earlier on, is now past that 200 GPM mark. And his experience is also catching up. He's definitely uh, getting on par with a lot of the other heroes in this game, hitting that level 6 as well. So um, good news uh, for BXF right there. And obviously going to regroup perhaps, wait for a couple more cooldowns to come back up. And you think that the pressure, uh, the tower push is going to continue here from BXF? Oh, no questions asked. I mean, BXF has a team right now where they're just going to, every time their cooldowns are up, they're going to be doing something. Because if they're just idling, they're going to be slowly losing because the silhouette is just going to be getting more farm. Yeah. So they, they just want to push as much towers, get as big of a lead before silhouette gets fat. And I think they're doing a fabulous job of that so far. Yeah, it's <laughs> that was that was some impressive pushing, no doubt. But again, with their makeup, it it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Helm of the Black Legion already on Balfour. I love this too, by the way. No boots for Balfour, right? <laughs> I guess it's just one of those cases. Not even necessary. <laughs> do you think that's the right choice? I mean, do you, do you agree uh, there? Uh, I I mean, it's worked out for him so far, but yeah. definitely like to see him get boots soon. Could could be useful. Last time I checked, yeah. boots are uh, pretty pretty damn powerful. So. And I don't know if you saw, but Hag just ported from bottom as soon as Legion Hero showed up, and now she's going to free farm top yeah. while Hellborn uh, 4v5s. Yeah, and speaking of that, Pharaoh actually getting uh, nearly caught. The minions are chasing, but it looks like Pharaoh is going to be able to run away in the meantime. The five minions, though, on her heels, but yeah, she will be fine. As you said, though, Ratchet Ag, now at the top lane. Is that GPM, it's been raising. I mean, now it's up to 250 gold per minute. So KZ definitely coming back. And here's that middle push. The wards are down. Keeper the Force has a root ready just in case. And the minions are not here as well from Balfagor. So that's also uh, taken away from a little bit of damage. He is trying to gather up those charges uh, to spawn the five minions, of course. In fact, there we go. It looks like only four minions come out. But Tempest doing a good job of actually taking over one of the minions for his own. But this tower will end up falling. Will it be denied or taken out? Those the big question. Oh, it's just had a night range. Here come the Keeper of the Force minions. And here we go. It is going to be denied by Midas right there. Playing that Tempest. So well played. But again, that's still the tower is still dead. That's the big thing. And that's now the fourth tower dead already in favor of the Hellborn team compared to the one killed by the Legion team. And Wretched Attack, as you mentioned, now pushes the bottom lane. And now pushing that one up a little bit as well as getting more farms. So it's the Hellborn team doing an excellent job of playing as a four-man team here while giving Wretched Attack that great recovery farm. And she's going to start being uh, pretty big herself in the near future. Future. Yeah, and I kind of have to scratch my head on why Swindle Melons didn't bother to come to that fight, knowing Hag wasn't there. You know, Hag was showing herself in so far away. They could have took that fight 4v5, I feel. Yeah. Without Hag, I mean, they don't have that much damage. They have the Balfagor ulti and the Poliwog Priest, but aside from that, I, I think they could have taken that fight. Yeah, I, I think it really, though, it comes down to just, it's so intimidating. I mean, they only had four heroes, but there's all those minions. I mean, there's just all these yeah, units. So, you know, math-wise, maybe it would make sense that they could take it, but I, I really think it's that intimidation factor almost. That it looks like there's more there than there really is even. But Balfour will dive on an F1 in the back. In the meantime, however, they're not going to go for a kill by any means. But again, they're pressuring this bottom tower at the first one here. Magnus missing the stun oh. on the Balfour. Unfortunate for him. And uh, both the Keeper and him will get away in Balfagor. And now spawning the minions once again. And back to the tower. You see Keeper running up. The root's going to come out. The hell on New Earth. Not 80 charges, but still a good amount of damage. That Tempest ultimate used, though. Pulling Wretched again. But down goes Tempest shortly after. Silhouette ports in the eruption. Goes off. Does a little bit of damage to Balfagor. But the Demonic Pathogen comes out with a silence. And spreading some damage as well. Glacius, a nice breath of the Feral on him. And Glacius will fall. Balfagor is sitting next to the tower as well as Keeper the Force. They want to at least kill the tower. That they will complete what right there. Keeper the force goes invis, and he does not have a port though, so we really need to be careful. On top to your tower. Holy crap! You're right, Polywog Freeze, only level one wards, but doing damage already 
to the base tower. This is just insane pushing presence from Blackfade here. Yeah, I mean, they they can split push so well when you have this many pushers. It's actually absurd. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that... <laughs> they have to look at Kongor, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they're in a very good position to be able to get an easy Kongor kill. Mm -hmm. And if Legion is too scared to pick a fight in their own side, I mean, I highly doubt they'll be able to fight at Kongor. Yeah. Well, Honestly, especially... I, I think they're really, really trying to push Magmus to get his portal keys. 800 away, I, I think they're waiting on that. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, too, I mean, especially since Tempest Ultimate is down. I mean, with that being down, there, there's really no chance that the Legion team has, at least in my opinion, of feeling strong, you know, going and trying to disrupt them from doing Kongor as a five-man unit, but um, they are not doing Kongor, so, but the, the idea definitely there as you're putting it, so we'll see if Black Fate comes to that. But look at this, 311 gold per minute all of a sudden on a wretched hack. I mean, again, just talk about recovery. Uh, yeah. She played it so smart, she was at the bottom lane, she went to the top lane when farm was up there, um, off, off to that horrid start because of the situation, and now she's 300 plus. The rest of the team, Polywalk, Balfagor, and Keeper of the Forest, obviously, obviously been doing a lot of the pushing power. They're all basically around that 400 GPM mark. Kongor so. action. And here you go. As you uh, as you so well suggested there, Soul's Bulwark was actually just finished recently on Keeper of the Force as well. By the way, it is defensive currently, but of course... <laughs> Look uh, at those minions. It's <laughs> an effect, yeah. There's so many of them, it's ridiculous, but the Stomp, of course, gonna be yeah, they uh, have like powerful. a they have like a creep wave with them, man. It's pretty, pretty absurd. Yeah. This is... Uh, Kind of out of hand, but this is awesome at the same time. It's very rare we get to see such an aggressive push strategy like this on the competitive scene. And the fact that Black Fate is doing this. It, see, that actually brings up another question, as obviously Congress is going to go dead here. Who's going to get it uh, is probably going to be uh, Wretched Hack. Wretched Hack, okay, yeah. I respect Wretched Hack. Um, I was going to bring up, though, do you think BXF came into this game with the mindset of we're going to put the strategy in there, or was it simply no. reaction? Uh, I, I think it had everything to do with the silhouette first pick. Mm hmm I, I'm sure they've, you know, Silhouette's been picked a lot. Why has the hero been so successful? Every single game it gets free farm that, you know, I've seen to date that it's dominated on. All the games, you know, when we watch TDM, they, they make it so that hero gets complete free farm and uh, BXF yeah. wasn't going to allow it. Yeah, so... <laughs> kind of kind of like a Mage Bane factor, you know? You, you see Mage Bane, you're like, okay, we're not going to let this guy get farm. Mm -hmm. How are we going to do it? We're going to either pick heavy gank or heavy push, and they went with heavy push. Yeah, and they are, by all means, we're not even wow. 15 minutes in, and this. they're already pushing the base. The wards are down, they're still level 1, but look at the tower! It's just I falling can't. dead, they can't do anything! SGTY can literally do nothing. Okay, the portal key was just purchased by Magnus, yep. so they have that now. This is their chance to make something happen. Is it going to start channeling up that eruption? Are they going to find that moment? Of course, on the front lines. Feral will go in right here. Magnus in the background, channeling up the eruption. And here he goes, right on top of giving the force, but the reaction. Hell on New Earth coming out. That bat blast as well. The Sun is going to want a Tempest ultimate. Locking a couple of heroes down in the meantime. But Tempest is going to drop to those Balfour minions, it looks like. And again, remember, Wretched Hag does have that token of life, even if she does die. Feral's going to get picked off right here as Wretched Hag going balls to the wall, simply because more than likely he does have that token of life. And they so. still have the token, yeah. And they're going to push the racks now. I mean, SGTY, uh, are we going to see a 15, 16 minute concede here because of this push? This is just ridiculous. Uh, I don't think we'll see the concede on the, uh, no, 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 second racks, possibly, but yeah. not, not yet. Oh, Glacier's almost dead. Obviously, the token of life being used, but Magnus will pay for his life as a result of going to get in that kill. The racks will fall, so they're going to fall back. But as you said, don't expect the concede, at least just yet. With the one being dead, there still is hope. For that silhouette, perhaps, to try to get bigger and better and then take over, but <laughs> I haven't yeah, seen anything I, like I, this I in would, a while. I would definitely be kind of disappointed in SGTY if they concede here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they pull, pick the full push team. I mean, one with a team like this, one team fight loss, and you catch up so fast. The, I mean, yeah, the Rax is down, but they have the team fight capability. You know, Magmus hit 11, try and get Tempest to hit 11, Pharaoh hit 11, you know, get a decent team fight. Yeah. And uh, they have no token now. You never know what can happen. Uh, so I, I don't think it's worthy of a concede just yet. Yeah, very true. That's very, very true. So um, we'll see if SGTY can find that opportunity. But again, a big thing to stress as well, Black Fate is up one game to nothing as a result of coming from the winner's bracket. So here in this best of the five, they win here. <laughs> You will need to win three in a row if you're SGTY to uh, become yeah. the European champion. So uh, that yeah. obviously puts you really far behind, whereas if SGTY was to win, then it's basically a new best of the three is what it simply comes down to. So big, yeah. big difference there with uh, winning and losing in this first game even. So Yeah.
Oh, what? Uh, Glacius might be getting in trouble. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna fall here. Not much. Uh, not much Umza is gonna be able to do right there. And that that honestly does a lot. I mean, I don't think this Hellborn team is gonna elect to push without Glacius, or maybe they will. I don't know. They're kind of grouping up here, but that kind of just stalls the pain train for another thirty seconds, and everything helps. Mm -hmm. Every little bit helps. In I mean, Magnus like this, is so. probably so close to eleven, so th that's gonna help a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he, he got a pretty solid eruption off, I mean, in the last fight, and again, if he can get another one off, and with all those minions there, with uh, the heroes on top of that, and if you get a good level 2 ultimate in that uh, eruption from Magnus, then that can be the deciding factor, no doubt, so. Um, yeah, I, one thing I want to say is that, because I, I like playing uh, farming Magnus a lot, and, you know, Swindle Melons is playing that role right now, I really disagree with him not getting even one point into Volcanic Touch. I mean, that in itself is kind of like a rune axe for the hero. You just farm so fast. You could farm stacks, well, you could push creepways really fast. I mean, at least one point in it do a lot for him. You could even argue that it's it's a very effective counter pushing tool in this game. Because of all those minions, you stun in, you get a couple yeah. of attacks, even one attack off, and all of a sudden that's spreading that damage that much more as a result of killing those little creeps that are all over the place. So, Yeah, it, it bothers me a lot when I see people that don't get that skill. It's, it's so good. I mean... Oh, here they go on Keeper of the yeah, Forest. Yeah, Keeper of the Forest may fall right here. He goes in mid, but of course a revelation right next to him. He will root. Will it be enough to survive? No one up, but the war trap on a silhouette in the meantime. Holy crap. The burst damage is way intense for her. Magnus will be able to stun away, but it ends up being a one for one right there. And of course, silhouette being the target that's down on the Legion team. That they definitely does not help things. Yeah. That, that just stalls it. I mean, even though it's only a one for one and the silhouette died, it's still worth it. No hag ulti. No Poliwag ulti, and no Keeper ulti, so... True. Can't really push. Barrier idle finish, by the way, though. <laughs> I'm Oh, uh, that That's a huge pickup. Yeah. The great Beyond against huge. that Magnus. Yeah. That'll be great for, against him, of course, so... Um, Glacius, I actually want to get your uh, thoughts on this. In this game, do you think Glacius maxing out Aura may have been the most efficient way to go? Uh, because they're just so push intensive and they're using quite a bit of mana while pushing, or do you think it's fine the way he's going? Uh, no, I, I think the, they're gonna, at the same time, they're gonna be fighting a lot in these pushes, so they're gonna yeah. need as much damage as possible to take out these heroes. Alright. Um, as much slow, as much damage as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fine to go that, the way he did. Speaking of and increased damage, put, oh sorry. Yeah, I said maybe even put points into imprisonment instead of chilling presence. But yeah, I was going to say Hellflower on Hag as well, yep. if that's what you're going to say. Yep, yeah. yep, Hellflower just purchased from the side shop right there, so uh, Keizu will have that now to use as well in these team fights. We'll see who that target choice is. But okay, so the cooldown's kind of being reset here. Obviously 20 seconds on that Poliwag ultimate, 28 on the Keeper Root, and then even got 40 Bat seconds blast. on the Bat Blast. So. Yeah. Kind the of Bat Blast is what they really need to be able to put out that damage to actually kill the heroes when they push, so uh, I expect them to wait for that. And they're doing a, doing a smart job of not forcing it. I was kind of scared that they were going to force the fight even without their ultimates and kind of throw. But they're doing a good job of waiting for him, so... Yeah. Yeah, they are uh, playing very, very passive and not going to... Just chipping at the tower. Yeah. Well, the, the, as Siori likes to always say, the defender's advantage. I mean, use your tower to your advantage if you can. Mm -hmm. And that's what SG2Y, of course, is a, uh, attempting to do here at this top lane and playing that very smart. But the cooldowns, they are just about basically up now, so... Yep. Will we see uh, Black Fade making that aggressive move? And uh, where is the big question? Going to continue with some split pushing, I guess, all the way up to the creep. Wait. Do you think waiting for Conger here could be a, an efficient thing for BXF, or should they just keep that pressure up and push? I do, actually. You make a good point. I mean, Conger should be up within, I'd say, maybe three minutes. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. So, yeah, I mean, that would be the safest thing to do. And I don't think that Legion could catch up in that three minutes that much. So, yeah, you still have complete map control. And uh, getting hagged and even more farmed is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We'll see what uh, if that. I, I kind of feel like that's what was what they're going for here. Yeah, you're right. It, it does yeah. look that way. I mean, they're just going from top to middle, keeping the lanes pushed up. Now, a big thing again to keep in mind: you see Magmus actually all the way yeah, to the bottom lane. Yeah, I see that. Kind of <laughs> watching. <laughs> well, not only that though, is that obviously this lane up being pushed up in the help one's favor, but Magmus is doing a good job of getting some farm and keeping it pushed back, but that will be something that the Legion team constantly has to address now uh, throughout this game, is that bottom massive push because of the racks being down, so as early as they were especially, so 
That is difficult. Gnome's Wisdom on Polywalk Priest again, not maybe the usual, but with this lineup and what, what they're doing, definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. That's a good pickup. I'd say the Gnome's is great for their t uh, their strategy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to look at what kind of vision both teams have down, and neither team really has too much vision on the map. I mean, they have that, ma uh, that Hellborn Ward kind of showing in the middle, but aside from that, I don't see any other Ward of Sight. Oh, here comes initiation. Oh, here we go. They do jump in. The wars are down. That's the only ultimate use so far. Balfour in the front lines. Where's Hell with Hunter charges? He's gonna use it right here. That tab is on the one pulling him back in. There's the Hell on Newer coming out. That tower is destroyed. And the Hell on Newer doing so much damage. Silhouette will end up falling. The Legion team just falls apart. Tempest buys back. But I think that may have actually done it. The melee racks will fall. Magnus stuns back in. Tempest running in, but it's just not gonna matter. Help Laura apply to Magnus. And Magnus will fall. Hat trick coming up for SmackDown. Oh, there's the vote to concede. And BXF will take the first game in this best out of five. And again, as a result of that, they'll now be up two games to nothing in this series. So SGTY, they're going to need to win three games in a row to be the champions of this qualifier. If not, BXF will be going yeah. to Greenback Summer. Having four heroes above 400 GPM and one of them at 500, I mean, that's just pretty absurd. Man, I mean... So really, you think uh, the picking stage, that's that's where BXF really shined there. Uh, well, I think that SGTY, you know, I was just stressing how they did a really good job. I, I wasn't too sure about the silhouette uh, as I feel like that it's not as strong as people think it is to be first pick, but I love the Tempest mag, but BXF responded so well with their picks. So, yeah. I mean, great job by them and having that strategy to counter their lineup so well. Yeah, that it was a lot of fun to watch, and, and it definitely excited that we got a game like that, of course, because, uh, yeah, BXF, they played that very well, picked very well, kind of a reaction, as you said. Um, SG2Y had a strong lineup. It's just uh, BXF, you know, they came at them with uh, uh, quite the arsenal there of a push power and just were not able to handle it. So um, congratulations to BXF again. It is not over, though. They're up two games to nothing, but uh, SGTY, of course, they can definitely come back, but it is going to be difficult now as uh, they only need to win three in a row. Like I said, one win, though, for Black Vader, one more win will indeed get them the uh, the title of being the champions here and qualify for the DreamX Summer 2012 event. So wrapping this first game up here, once again, I was Breaky CPK. Joining me with Shams here. And as always, stay tuned to Honcast.com for much, much more coverage. We're going to have our second game, guys. going to be coming up. Will SGTY make that comeback and at least uh, force another game or a Black Fade sweep this series, which, again, that would be something. So stay tuned, guys. Game two's coming up.